Isaiah 55 verse 1. The book of Isaiah chapter 55 verse 1. Bring it up. Ho, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters. It says everyone that thirsteth. What is that thirst talking about? That's talking about our people thirsty for answers, for solutions to the problems that's going on in our communities, to the solution that's going on with our people. We've tried Islam, we've tried Christianity, and look where our people are at still today. On the bottom, right. getting shot down by the police. Baby mothers, baby fathers, we have no justice in our communities, so we thirst for answers. Read on. And he that have no money, come ye, boy. It says that he that have no money, come and buy. This gospel is not supposed to be sold. Meaning your tithes, the pastor is not supposed to be asking for tithes in church. Right. Tithes is a law given to the Levitical priest to take care of them. And it was never money. Right. It was right. never money. The Bible is not to be sold. It is to be given away for free. But what is that buy that the Bible is talking about? What is the buy it's talking about? Give me Proverbs chapter 23, verse 23. The Bible says, come and buy with no money. So what does it talk about? Buy what? Let's see what the Bible says. For far too long, we've gone without listening to the commandments of the Most High God. That's right. So read what you got. The book of Proverbs, chapter 23, verse 3. 23. 23, 23. Verse 23. Read. By the truth. By the what? The truth. The what? The truth. Now, everybody says they have an understanding or principle of what the truth is. But right now, our opinion does not matter. God's word is coming out. Right. So brother with the fire, let me ask you this. What is the truth? My brother's right here, all of it. What y'all think the truth is? What is the truth? Somebody, anybody, ask God, me. What God, is the truth? God, God is the truth. You, to what? Pertaining to what? Pertaining to the Bible. God says, come and buy of me truth. What is the truth? Do you know what the truth is according to the Bible? Okay, anybody else? What's truth? What is the truth according to the Bible? Anybody? All right, so that's what we're here for, to give understanding, the true understanding from the prophets of God, God's word, right? right. right? So what is the truth? Give me Psalms 119, 142. Let's find out what the truth is according to the Bible. Not of my opinions, not of any of these brothers' opinion, according to the opinion of the Bible, the Most High God. Read what you got. The book of Psalm, chapter 119, verse 142. Listen up. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness. So anybody claim to be righteous out here, right? Let's, let's use what the Bible, what it also defines what righteousness is, or if you're righteous. But what is truth? Read. And thy law is the truth. God's laws are the truth. That's right. God's laws is what's going to clean our communities up. God's laws applying it is what's going to bring his people back on top. Right. But the thing is, why are we not being taught God's laws? What happened? I'm going to show you what happened. Give me, uh, give me uh, Romans chapter 10. Romans 10 and 4. I'm going to show you what happened. The Bible got closed, and we're doing whatever the hell we want to do these days. And for that, what happens? Our communities are plagued with disease. There's no marriages going on. Therefore, whoredom is going on. Men jumping from hole to hole. Women jumping from rod to rod. Our brothers are here killing each other. If we apply God's laws, a dramatic change will come about. Everybody really? wants change, but nobody wants to change. But let me give you an example of why we don't know what righteousness is. Why we don't know what the truth is anymore. Because stuff like this is being brought out. Read Romans 10 and 4. The book of Romans, chapter 10, verse 4. Read. For Christ is the end of the law. We hear that, and then the Bible's closed. See, we got grace, God, Christ is the way. That's all we have to do, apply Christ. But let's hear what Christ says. Give me Matthew 5 and 17. Because the churches teach us that we don't have to keep God's laws no more. So therefore, all you have to do is have Christ in your heart, right? That's not what it's talking about. Bring it that out. is not what it's talking about. Christ is at his own mouth tells you that we have to still keep the laws. Let's use the Bible to find that out. Where else are we going to get answers from the Most High God from? The Bible. Not from us, the Bible. So let's stop doing what we want to do and actually apply. Read what you got. The book of Matthew, chapter 5, 
Verse 17. Pastor ain't gonna read you this part. Read. Think not that I am come to destroy the law. Christ said out of his own mouth, I didn't come to do away with God's laws. That was not my, that's not my purpose. I didn't come to do away with the laws of God. Read on. Or the prophets, I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Christ didn't come to destroy anything that the prophets before him set up, which was God's laws, getting our people back together. Because all throughout time, we've never listened to the Most High God. We've never kept God's laws and truth and sincerity. So therefore today, we are under the curses. What am I talking about with the curses now? Do you know what I'm talking about? The curses, the curses of God. Because the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans today, we are a cursed people. Does anybody know? Anybody care to answer? You blaming on white people? We blame on everything on white people, right? So if, so do you blame on the white people my hatred towards my people and me wanting to kill my brothers? We blame it on the white people? Well, I got a news flash for you. Before the white man was on this earth, murder was on this earth. Before the white man was on this earth, uh, disrespecting our parents, hating each other in our heart was on the earth before the white man got here. We got to stop and take responsibility, black man. We have to take responsibility for what we messed up and clean things up. But we can do that if we apply God's laws. Right. Now to an extent, yes, he's a catalyst for those things. He allows, he puts those things there, but ain't nobody forcing you to pick that gun up. Ain't nobody forcing you to get out here and sell drugs to your people. Let's find out. Give me, give me Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 4. Give me Jeremiah 10, 4. Matter of fact, I'm going to show you one of God's laws. Not Jeremiah 10, 4. Give me Leviticus 19, 17. If we apply this law today, I guarantee Southside will change up. I guarantee Portsmouth will change up. Newsflash, Portsmouth is number one on the list right now as far as most crimes out of all seven cities. Did y'all know that? Portsmouth is number one right now for murder, robbery, all types of evil. Number one right now. As long as I've been living, Portsmouth has never been number one. But why? Because there's no truth in the earth anymore. Now, if we apply this, which is one of God's laws, read what you got. The book of Leviticus, chapter 19, verse 17. Come on. Thou shalt not hate thy brother and thine heart. It says, thou shalt not hate thy brother. Hey, come here, bro. Come on, just build. Build, build, bro. No, we're not here to bash anybody. We're not out here to do that. We're out here to pick our people up and provide answers. Good, good. All praise. This is what I look at all day. Good, bro. So let me ask you this. It says, thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart. Could you explain that to me? What you think that means? Hating thou your brother in your heart. That means, I mean, to me? Yeah. Uh-huh. When another brother want to kill, like if I want to kill you, uh -huh. to me, I, I catalyze them as being white. Because, like you said, you said that was here before they arrived. Yeah. I disagree. Okay. Well, we had I, I think that that formula was forced into our mindset. Okay. Like selling drugs, shooting guns, and all that. Okay. You know, I think they they did. I don't think it. I know that they okay. they made us like that. All right, so but to answer your question, yeah. what I think about that is he's saying love your brother. Okay. You know? Right. We taught a basic principle in kindergarten: do unto others as you would like done to yourself. Right. So hating your brother in your heart. Number one, let's break this down. What is the heart according to the Bible? Give me Mark 7, 21. What does it mean to hate your brother in your heart, right? So this organ right here, right? Does emotions come from here? Does your emotions come from this part? That organ that's in your chest is beating in your chest? Does emotions come from there? We're using yeah. logic now, right? right? It doesn't come through here. Okay. Everything starts here. So let's see what the heart is according to the Bible first. Listen up, black man, Hispanic man. Listen up to your truth, your history. Read what you got. The book of Mark, chapter 7, verse 21. You listen up. What's your name anyway, bro? Thomas. Thomas? It's called Mighty name, Thomas. My name is Elia, all right? Thomas. So this is what the heart is according to the Bible. And then we're going to go back to, the, the, to that law. Read what you got. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts. Do thoughts come from your heart? That this, that pumps in the middle, it starts where? Your mind. Your brain, your mind. So it says, read again. From, for from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts. So I'm going to deal and build with that alone. From within the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts. Not good thoughts, evil thoughts. 
So, I'm gonna touch your logic, what you said about the white man, while still dealing with the law, mm -hmm. right? So, number one with starts is hating your brother and your heart. I don't know you from a can of paint, right? But let's say, I don't like you because you got cool shoes on. Or I don't like you because you talk a certain type of way, right? Let's start here in the mind first. That hatred starts up here. We don't just come out and naturally start hating each other. But the Bible says, what's the first thing that starts from the man's mind? Proceed evil thoughts. This was here before the white man was here. Evil thoughts. Evil thoughts. That was here before that man even existed. Is that natural? Say that again? It's, yes, it's a natural thing. Natural. That's a natural thing. Evil, hatred for my brother, that's, that's a natural carnal thing. Right? right? Give me Jeremiah 17, 17 and, it's nine? Jeremiah 17 and nine. We all like to lean on, follow your heart. When the first thing the Bible just said was the heart is evil. Evil thoughts proceed from the heart or the mind. Read what you got. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 17, verse nine. Come on. The heart is deceitful. The heart is what? Deceitful. So lean on your, follow your heart. The Bible said your heart is deceitful. Above all things. Some things. Above all things. The heart or the mind is the wickedest thing above all things that are upon the face of this earth. So leaning on your own heart or your own number, understanding, number one, you already done messed up. So let's go back to the law, right? Hating my brother and my heart. It says the heart, number one, is the most wicked thing. Because we're coming out of the heart or the mind is evil thoughts. So I don't know you. We didn't grow up together. Right. But say it's something on you that I don't like about you. I didn't touch you. I didn't put my hands on you. It started up here first. I already don't like you, right? God said it's hatred. Read again, Leviticus 19, 17. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Because before I proceed and do the action of the next step of wanting to rob you or murder you over some shoes, it got to start in the mind first. Why? It has to start in the mind first. Why? Why? Because why we said that carnal natural thing. Man alone without God's laws or being spiritual. Let's get with, uh, with spirit is. You know why I say why? Why do you say why? The white man. Okay. All right. I'm going I'm to I'm uh, get you this and I'm going to break down that white man thing. I'm going to show okay. you the evils in the yeah, earth before we, the white man. We was, in a, we was in a rough place for years and years, right? So In a rough place? Right. We was, we was depressed. Oh, okay. It's like, yeah. well, so, so you want to say slavery or what do you say? I mean, you know what I'm saying, though. No, explain it. And bondage, slavery. Okay, know? right. Did you know God put us in bondage but because of breaking that law and many others? Not just in the white man. What? Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm 27, right? So that, right? I'm basically going off of like what I what I know. At, like I'm 27. I'm going off of what kind of just happened. So you know, like a crackhead or alcoholic, they uh, got rehab. Uh, so I feel like our people need rehab yeah. because it's reason. Yes. It's a yes. reason why right. our people think like that. Right. You know, they ain't just wake up and be like, oh, I want. I mean, they might need some money. You know what I'm saying? Right. You know, but that ain't the right thing to do. Go get a job. Right. So that's why I say I. I, I take it back to blaming on the white man. You know, people say you can't blame everything or don't, but I do. Right. Give because, me, give me they, you know what I mean? Economically, that's who controlling, right or wrong. Find me that. Now, let me ask you something. In the beginning, I'm gonna, I'm maybe that's, I'm gonna break down that barricade and then we can proceed from there. We can get to this point right here. Cause you're right, the Lord used the white man, the Lord mm -hmm. used the white man to do this to the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. The Lord did that okay. because we forced God's hand to do that, right? But I'm gonna show you the beginning, okay? Let me ask you this. Let's get Christianity out of our minds. Oh, that's, Let's that's get there. Good, good. So this is gonna be easy for you, Thomas. I grew up, I grew up with that, with that uh, confused mindset. Though. Good. You Genesis know? 2 and 7. Genesis 2 and 7. Right. So let me ask you this. In the beginning, you heard of Adam. You yeah. know who Adam is? Right. Let me ask you this. What color was Adam? Adam had to be black. I like this brother already. I like this brother I already. I mean, they was in, they was in, uh, not Africa, I ain't gonna say Africa. Well, Kemet, well, Kemet, right? Well, Egypt, they was in Africa, which is a the European garden, The Garden of right? Eden was in Africa. Yeah. It's, it was in Jerusalem, so right. Africa, right. Genesis 2 and 7. That's good, you already know that. But let's get it with the Bible. So what color was Adam? The Bible does contain color. 
The Bible is not whitewashed with white images, white Jesus as you see right here. Let's see what our forefathers look like. Not the right? Give me Genesis, Genesis. I got you. Okay. Let me bring this out first. Give me Genesis 2 and 7. The book of Genesis, chapter 2, verse 7. Come on. And the Lord God for man of the dust. Of the what? The dust. The what? The dust. Anybody with common sense in their head knows that the dust or dirt is a dark color. God said, I formed Adam from the dust of the ground. Mike, check one, two. One, two. All praises. God said, I formed Adam from the dust of the ground. Dust isn't white. Dust isn't gray. Dust isn't uh, uh, purple. It's a dark color, right? So God said that Adam, he formed him from the dust of the ground. Adam and everybody on the earth at the time, because yes, there was more than one person on the earth at the time. Let's not be simple. All right? We're black people. The earth started with black people. Now, I'm going to show you something. Get me Cain Slew Abel. Get the mind strength, the mindset. Black people. This is before the white man was on the earth. Read what you got. The book of Genesis, chapter 4 and verse 8. And Cain talked with Abel, his brother. And it came to pass when they were in a field that Cain rose up against Abel. And did what? His brother and slew him. And slew him. Black on black crime. Killed his brother. Black men. Black men. The white man was not created yet. The white man did not come about until Genesis 25. This is Genesis chapter 4. Blacks was on the earth at this time. So the, black, the white man was not the start of this thing. This spirit was on this earth prior to the white man. Right? Right. Now I'm going to show you, I just showed you, Cain killed Abel. Now we're going to fast forward a little bit to Moses' time. Thousands of years later with the commandments. Give me Exodus 20. Now if this was applied at the time, like it should be applied today, that Cain slew and slain, killing Abel would not have been an issue because why he hated his brother in his heart. Daniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.